and we're just going to have to follow them. Uh, so odd apomorphic, this last one here, is an unshared derived characteristic. It's all by itself. So if we look at this uh, dendrogram again, uh, we can say that at each of these branching points, we see a derived characteristic which unites all the members of that clade. So for the vertebrata, anything that uh, any other animals that are in this uh, lineage, none of them have uh, a vertebral column. So this uh, characteristic of having vertebrae is actually a derived characteristic, and it's shared by all of these uh, these lineages up here. So that is a shared derived characteristic of having uh, vertebrae. Uh, having four limbs is another shared derived characteristic, which helps us to say, sorry fish, uh, you are not tetrapods. You are not in this clade of tetrapods because you do not have four limbs. Uh, amniota, all of these organisms have an amniote egg, a specialized type of egg that uh, can be produced on uh, dry land. Amphibians have to lay their eggs in water. So, sorry amphibians, uh, you do not have this shared derived characteristic of having uh, an amniotic egg. Uh, so, so on and so forth. There are uh, shared derived characteristics. Um, now, when we look at just the reptiles, we can see that uh, if we include birds, uh, we're not exactly sure where to put birds in the reptilian uh, clade because they have so many autapomorphies. They have so many unshared derived characteristics. Uh, things they don't share with other uh, reptilians, things like beaks. Well, some turtles have beaks, so that's not a great example. Feathers. Uh, you're not going to find any feathered alligators or any feathered snakes or any feathered turtles. So that is a un, an unshared derived characteristic or an odd apomorphy of birds. Uh, and warm blood in this lineage is an odd apomorphy. It is an unshared derived characteristic. Uh, it is also an odd apomorphy in this lineage which leads to mammalia, uh, which is one, another reason why we can say that this characteristic is polyphyletic. All right, so a few more terms for us to learn. Uh, homologous, analogous, and homoplasy. So homologous characteristics are those that are similar based on shared common ancestry. Okay, uh, but sometimes we'll see that there are characteristics that are similar not based on shared common ancestry, uh, that are the project of con product of conversion evolution. Um, and analogous characteristics are similar due to common function, uh, not necessarily due to common ancestry. And an analogous character we can say is homoplasius, which comes to us from the Greek word that means same mold. Uh, and an analogous characteristic or trait is a homoplasy, where we can say that a certain character is homoplasius. So conversion evolution. Uh, is the evolution of analogous characteristics in distantly related clades. We might say unrelated clades, but we know that all life is related. So we can't say that uh, the two clades are unrelated because uh, we know that that's not true. At some level, all life is related to other forms of life, but we can say that it's all relative and that they are relatively distantly related. Uh, parallel evolution is the development of similar characteristics in related but distinct organisms that are descended from a common ancestor but in different clades. So parallel evolution is when we see characters evolving uh, not necessarily by shared common ancestry uh, but uh, characters that tend to be fairly plastic or changeable within a clade but not all members of that clade may have that particular characteristic. Uh, so you've heard me use the word dendrogram 
and Philogram to talk to talk about one of these uh, particular types of models. Uh, these are very commonly used in uh, discussions of the evolution of different uh, lineages or clades of organisms. Um, these three words kind of get used interchangeably and inconsistently. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to say they all refer to the same basic type of diagram. Um, there are some subtle differences, but like I say, they're not consistent enough for us to, to be concerned about right now. Um, sometimes we can draw a, a dendrogram uh, where we have time being better represented in this uh, vertical axis here. So in this case, each of these branch points does correspond to a deeper and deeper time point in history, uh, but they're not necessarily metric, right? So it's not like this is a calendar it's to say that there is a nice, even uh, timing, time spacing of the evolution of these different um, shared derived characteristics or synapomorphies. Uh, speaking of time, uh, there are some terms that refer to rates of evolution. Uh, horotele is a normal rate of evolution. By evolution, we mean dis diversification into different lineages. Uh, Tacatele is a fast rate of evolution or very rapid diversification. Uh, so, for example, the finches in the Galapagos Islands uh, diversified relatively quickly because they had to occupy the different niches in the Galapagos Islands, so that would be an example of Tacatele. Uh, Brady Tele, uh, Brady means slow in Latin. Uh, so a relatively slow rate of evolution with little or no diversification within a particular lineage. And uh, horseshoe crabs are an example of a lineage of organisms that have changed very little throughout their fossil history. We can find uh, horseshoe crabs uh, fossils from uh, hundreds of millions of years ago that look just like the horseshoe crabs we find alive and on the beaches uh, today. So that's an example of Brady Teeley. All right, we've got these eight levels of uh, taxonomic organization, eight different levels of taxonomy. Uh, at the highest, most inclusive level is the domain. We've got three domains uh, and kingdom. Phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Backwards, species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, domain. A lot of people have come up with a mnemonic to remember this order, but then don't realize that there's value in going this way as well. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, interesting pluralizations in here that we should remember. Uh, if we have more than one phylum, we've got two phyla. Okay, so we change from the U-M ending to the A ending to make it plural. Okay, uh, more than one kingdom, we've got kingdoms, classes, ES, orders, uh, families. Uh, if we have more than one genus, we have genera. So we change the U-S to an E-R-A ending, so multiple genera. Uh, and species is an interesting one, because if we have one species, we have a species. Two species are species. Ten species are species. So species is one of these words that is it's the same whether it's the singular or the plural. Now, there is a word that is specie, um, but it means something entirely different. It basically means pocket change. It means pocket change is specie, if you look it up. So you might be typing it, and spell check might say, well, species is a word, but it's not the word that you think it is. So just one species is a species. And for every living organism that we've ever encountered, we've been able to assign uh, it to uh, all of these eight different levels in the hierarchy. From the most inclusive, or the biggest, uh, 
the domain level, all the way down to the least inclusive or the very specific. So the word species and specific uh, obviously come to us from the same word root. Uh, genus, genera, general, uh, general, generic, all uh, come to us from the same word root as well. So, for example, within the domain of eukarya, we've got animals as one of our kingdoms. Uh, we've got a phylum chordata. That's our own phylum. Uh, mammals. Yep, we are mammals, but we are not carnivores. We are not in the order of carnivora. We are in the order of primates. Uh, family, felidae, for example. Uh, genus, okay, at the generic level, we always italicize. So the generic name, the genus name, we italicize. And the specific epithet, or the second part of this binomen or two-part name, uh, is also italicized, but it's always lowercase. So for a species name, it should always include both the generic name and the specific epithet. So we don't just say that the species of this particular organism is tigris. We see that the species name is Panthera tigris. Okay, so it's only generic names and species names that are italicized. All of these names should be capitalized to let us know that we're referring to a specific taxon. Um, and so we've got Panthera tigris. Uh, here is another taxon. Another species, Heliatus leucocephalus. Uh, since we know that Heliatus is the genus, because I've written it down here, henceforth we can write just H period uh, leucocephalus. Again, we know that this is a species name because it's italicized with a capital letter H here representing the generic name and a lowercase L. That's not an uppercase I, that's a lowercase L for the specific epithet which belongs in a family, an order, a class. Here you can see I've already raised the, the question. Should we be calling it reptilia or should we be calling it aves? Are these birds or are they reptiles? We definitely know that they're chordates and that they're animals and that they are eukaryotes. All right, uh, then there are other kingdoms within eukarya. Planty, within the Magnoliophyta, we've got Magnoliopsida, We've got the order of Phagales and the family Phagaceae, uh, which includes Phagus, which is the bur the uh, excuse me the beech trees. Uh, but one of our genera within the Phagaceae is the genus Quercus. This is the genus of oaks. And we've got Quercus virginiana. So what are these organisms that I have put in here for you? Uh, well, Panthera tigris is the species of tigers. Heliatus leucocephalus, maybe you can guess, maybe not, but that's the bald eagle. Uh, and Quercus virginiana is our live oak, just like tumor's oaks are live oaks of the species Quercus virginiana. But it's not just common, ordinary things like uh, tigers and eagles and trees that we can apply these taxonomic levels to. There are also other things like fungi and bacteria and archaea that we can apply all of these taxonomic levels to. Uh, you can see we've got another, uh, we've got species names for uh, Ammonita muscaria, Escherichia coli, and Methanococcus genasii. So Ammonita muscaria is your common uh, mushroom which has the red cap with the white uh, spots on the top, the Super Mario mushroom, uh, or the Smurf House mushroom. Pretty much whenever we talk about a mushroom, commonly we're referring to this particular species, which is interesting because if you eat it, uh, too much of it, it'll kill you. It's poisonous. E. coli uh, is a species of bacterium, uh, which is found in our gut colon, which is why it's E. coli, because much of your colon, uh, and Methanococcus genasii is a species of Archaean, uh, which 
produces methane, hence the name methanococcus. Uh, sometimes eight levels of uh, taxonomy is not enough. Uh, in some species, uh, or some lineages, some clades, there's been so much diversification uh, that we need to include uh, more levels to have it make sense. So we can use prefixes <coughs> like super. Super means over and above, like Superman is no ordinary man. He's an over and above man. Uh, sub means under or beneath, like a submarine goes under the uh, marine waters. Uh, beneath sub, we've got infra. Uh, and sometimes we even have to add another taxonomic level called a tribe. And tribe is usually found between uh, family and genus. Okay, so where, what's an example of where we might need to use some of these uh, additional prefixes? Well, let's think about what's the most successful group of organisms out there. So what is the most successful group of organisms at the, let's say, at the, the, the order level? Uh, the beetles are the most successful group. Uh, but of course, I don't mean beetles, I mean beetles. And I have to admit, I was an embarrass embarrassingly old age to have realized that the music group, the Beatles, is not spelled as the same way as the insect, the Beatles. Uh, but the Beatles, uh, in the order Coleoptera, are one of the most successful, are the most successful order of uh, organisms the world has ever seen. There's over 300,000 named species of beetles. So that's a lot. This is just a small uh, scattering of the, uh, of the colorful and pretty ones. There's lots of tiny little ugly ones out there as well. So here's an example of a beetle. This is the southern pine beetle. This thing is a, a forest pest. It can get into your pine trees and kill them, and that's no good. So uh, you can see... Here's its scientific name, Dendroctinus frontalis. Uh, and even though this picture is very large, this is not a very large insect. It's less than half a centimeter in size. So not a big insect at all. And then taxonomically, where does it fit into? How do we get to this species? Well, if we go to uh, bugguide.net, which is a great resource for finding out information about insects, uh, we can see that, not too surprisingly, as all insects are, they are animals, they are arthropods, uh, they are hexapods, they are in a subphylum of hexapods, or six-legged arthropods, uh, which includes the insects. And you can see we get through the insects to the order Coleoptera or beetles. Um, we know there's so many that we need to divide them up into suborders. Uh, there's the Edifica and there's the Polyphiga, among others. As it turns out, our southern pine beetle is in Polyphiga. Uh, it is in a superfamily called the Cuculianoidea, which are uh, is a superfamily of weevils and weevil-like beetles. Uh, and the family of Curculianidae, which are the weevils, or the snout and bark beetles. Uh, and the subfamily, Scolitinae, and the tribe, Hylazinini. In the subtribe, Tomasina, the genus Dendroctinus, and the species is Dendroctinus frontalis. So here you can see beetles are so diverse that they need to have a lot of sub and super taxa in order to adequately describe uh, the diversity. Tri tribes and subtribes, and so on and so forth. So that's our introduction to systematics and a lot of terminology. Uh, that we're going to be using over the course of the semester to describe the diversity of uh, different uh, clades of organisms, different groups of organisms. So, something to think about before we delve into uh, our survey of biodiversity is why do we have these three domains? <laughs>